you for your kind introduction, Robert, and to the organizers at Bioscience Magazine. Today, my aim is to convince you of the importance of 3D culture and how to engineer 3D culture models for drug discovery and disease modeling. I'll introduce you to a, a wide variety of tools and technologies available with a focus on AMS Bio, whose products and technical support I've used personally for many years and have led to many exciting developments using 3D culture. To begin with, we'll look briefly at the market drivers in biomedical research and how improved 3D culture models fit within the drug discovery pipeline. We then look at the building blocks that comprise a successful 3D culture model by deconstructing it, followed by some brilliant work in the formation of organ structures from Professor Hans Clever's lab using natural extracellular matrices. Then we'll move to more examples of hepatocyte neuronal differentiation in synthetic matrices, finishing with what I believe to be the ideal 3D culture drug discovery model. Broadly speaking, biomedical research is the study of biological processes and diseases with the ultimate goal of developing effective treatments and cures. However, the cost to develop a new drug in today's market is truly staggering. In 1975, the farm industry spent the equivalent of $100 million in today's dollars to develop an FDA-approved drug. By 1987, that figure had tripled. By 2005, this figure had more than quadrupled. And the true amount that companies spend per drug approved today is estimated to be a staggering $5.8 billion. The main reason for billions of dollars it costs to develop a new drug is the rate of failure. There is a 91% attrition rate of drugs in clinical development. The reason for the failure of drugs is often a poor understanding of the biology behind the human disease that leads to a lack of clinical efficacy and drug toxicities, off-target effects or side effects that are particularly prominent in the liver or heart. The bottom line is we have to do better. This high attrition rate may be, at least in part, due to the inadequacy of 2D culture models. 3D culture models offer the potential to significantly reduce this figure. In monetary terms, a 10% reduction in the failure rate would result in a cost savings of over $100 million per drug. Shown here in the diagram are the stages of the drug development pathway. 3D culture models have the potential to improve every stage of the drug development pipeline. Primary screens for targeted identification and validation are supported through improved disease models of human development and physiology. Specialized cell 3D models are ideally suited for lead optimization or secondary pharm pharmacology. For metabolic profiling, 3D hepatocyte models demonstrate enormous benefits over 2D culture models in terms of their induction of CYP enzymes and their long-term survival and culture over their 2D counterparts. Finally, 3D cardiomyocyte models are used to look for potential drug side effects in the heart. Most biologists grow cells the way their advisors did it, and their advisors before them, and that is as monolayers on 2D polystyrene surfaces. But the problem with that is that the resulting data may not very well accurately represent what happens in vivo. After all, cells in our body grow in complex 3D structures, and that impacts their cell morphology, behavior, as well as gene expression, physiology, and drug responses. All of these factors can make a big difference in the relevance of the model. Let's now deconstruct the 3D matrix. Cell function is controlled by the totality of the 3D environment that provides the physical scaffolding, cell-cell communication, migratory paths, and other cues. Let's break down the 3D model and look at the individual components. The first aspect, of course, is the cells. These cells can range from primary cells to stem cells or any combination thereof, shown on the left here. Within the 3D model, the cells interact between themselves. Cell-cell interactions are driven by cell adhesion molecules, or CAMs, as shown in the middle panel. These are proteoglycans found on the outside surface of the cells, and CAMs have many distinct domains that allow them to mediate cell-cell contacts by binding to specific partner proteins. These cell-cell interactions can be between the same cell type or between different cell types, for example, in a co-culture experiment. But perhaps the most significant aspect of 3D culture model are the interactions between the cells and the matrix. These interactions play a critical role by regulating biochemical and mechanical cues that guide cell function and can occur both at a molecular level, guiding, for example, cell adhesion, 
or at a macro level that provides a physical scaffold of a multicellular structure. The next slide breaks down the cell matrix interactions in more detail. Again, here we have micro and macro interactions. The molecular interactions may be nonspecific through ionic interactions, however this is of little biological relevance. Charged tissue culture surfaces are typically important for the adherence of the extracellular matrix, not necessarily cells. Which brings us to the specific molecular interactions directed by the cell matrix receptors. These receptors are integral proteins on the cell surface that mediate cell matrix contacts or adhesion of the cell to the matrix. And it is these receptor ligand interactions that relay information to the cell interior about the surroundings. Now these cell matrix interactions are cell specific, so you have to determine the optimal matrix for your cell type. To do this, you can use multi-well plates that are pre-coded with an array of different matrices. Now these cell matrix interactions are so important that when there is a loss of normal cell matrix interaction, the cell may undergo anoikis. This is a form of programmed cell death or apoptosis. Now over here on the right, at the macro level, the 3D matrix provides physical support of complex multicellular structures. Now this support can be biological in nature, as in the case with basement em membrane extract that forms a gel at 37 degrees, or it can be recombinant in nature in the form of hydrogels. On the other hand, shown on the right, the physical support can be synthetic. We'll look later at a porous plastic scaffold called Alvitex. This table provides an overview of the available tools to engineer a 3D culture model. I'll use the remainder of my talk to show examples of these technologies in action. First, we'll look at the natural 3D extracellular matrices that are available under the Culturex range. This includes basement membrane extract, which is similar to Matrigel, as it is also a basement membrane extract, but also offered, which some of you may not be aware of, is 3D laminin and collagen. Again, which one you choose is cell-specific. The natural matrices contain all the post-translational modifications like glycosylation, tertiary and quaternary structures of the in vivo environment. But these natural matrices are complex, containing multiple, multiple biologically active motifs, whereas the Matrix high gel technology offers a fully defined recombinant protein that contains specific adhesion receptor motifs of which multiple configurations are available. And then on the bottom we have the Alvatex synthetic scaffold that's available in multi-well plates or inserts. These reagents and technologies are not mutually exclusive, but they're often used in combination. For example, the Alvatex product can be used alone or it can be coated with your choice of extracellular matrix, be it natural or recombinant. It's important to note that AMS Bio has years of experience as a distributor of these products and they work closely with you to develop a 3D model that will meet your needs. Natural extracellular matrices are often referred to as traditional matrices, but they're far from that. The truth is that the natural matrices have and will continue to revolutionize 3D cell culture models. This is due at least in part to the wide selection and grades of natural matrices available to today's researcher. For example, they come available from a number of different sources, and even pre-qualified, which is important because these natural matrices have historically had a high lot-to-lot -lot variability. They're also in, available in different grades. For example, if you're considering cell therapy applications, the path clear designation ensures that the materials are free of any infectious agents, particularly LDEV. Again, this is where MS Bio is particularly helpful. They work closely between the customer and the suppliers to deliver you regulatory-friendly reagents. Not only is there a wide selection of natural matrix proteins, but they're also available formatted in assay kits. These 3D assay kits are particularly suited for cancer research. For example, cell proliferation, invasion, and angiogenesis are all hallmarks of cancer cells. These assay kits are available in a number of different formats and are designed to measure the attributes or biological activity of cancer cells in a 3D model. But let's start with a straightforward example looking at the morphology of breast cancer cells in 2D versus 3D. This experiment was conducted in Cultrex 3D BME, not to be confused with Matrigel. What's shown in the top two panels 
is that the breast cancer cells proliferate and expand when grown as a 2D monolayer, but they don't differentiate. Whereas when the cells are placed in 3D culture using the natural matrix BME, the breast cancers form spheroids in vitro that resembles tumor formation in vivo. This is really a clear-cut example, but what I find fascinating is the formation of tissue and organ structures within the 3D model. I'm excited to present groundbreaking...